All right, so the first thing we wanna make sure is we approach the tractor trailer unit. It's on level ground. I wanna make sure there's no leaks underneath, no noticeable fluid leaks, no obstructions underneath the vehicle. I'm gonna verify, very important, that my wheels are chalked or blocked. So I'm gonna verify that they are, and they are. At this point, I'm gonna turn on my four-way flashers or hazards, always three-point contact, entering and exiting. Four-way flashers, and I'm going to get my document binder. And I'm just gonna walk around the unit verifying that the four-ways are working and not damaged. So left side tractor, working. No visual obvious damage. At the rear of the tractor, verifying the four ways are working. Okay, and not damaged. Left side of the trailer, four ways working, not damaged. Again, verifying my wheels are chalked and blocked. At the back of the uh, trailer here, four ways are working. Again, not damaged. And we'll finish up the passenger side here. We're just doing the four ways and then our document check. I like to verify we're legal and safe. And what I mean is we're legal because the documents are gonna be valid. We're safe, our emergency four ways are working. Not damaged. And again, we can verify if we didn't see it on the other side, rear tractor, four ways working. Right side tractor, working and not damaged, and we'll finish at the front of the unit. So four ways are working. At this point, I like to check my documentation. So we wanna make sure that we have our national safety code, standard 13, schedule one, list of minor major defects present. We're gonna verify we have valid insurance, up to date, proper vehicle, proper company, and again, valid. Registration, valid, up to date, and verifying the license plate on the tractor matches license plate on registration. Proper description of vehicle, current, valid, and up to date. We're gonna approach the driver's window and check our inspection decal, so our CVIP. And we wanna make sure that our certificate is present, it's valid, signed by mechanic, and the certificate number matches the decal number. So they are current and that the dates are current. So this is good until April of 2024, the last month of that date, proper vehicle description. So I wanna always make sure you have your company information, visible, legible, all your weights, visible and legible. And lastly, we verify we have our safety fitness certificate in good standing for the carrier. So this completes my four ways and document check. I'm gonna put this back and shut off the four-way flashers. Perfect, so next now I'm gonna do the under the hood inspection component. So I'm gonna unlatch both sides of my hood. And before I open the hood of any vehicle, you wanna make sure that the hood is not compromised or uh, the hinges or swivel points damaged in any any way, shape, or form. So I'm just checking that the pivot points and the hinges are solid in place. And now I'm gonna slowly and safely open the hood. Nice and easy, verifying our safety cables and our hood springs are intact. And we're gonna start on the driver's side. So in this case, there's many you know, ways of checking your, your under the hood, but keep it organized is my advice. Just left to right, top down. So I'm going to start on the left side, make sure my hood cables and supports are in place, my radiator, my fan shroud and fan blades, all in place, visually good condition, no cracks or broken missing blades, washer fluid, we have good level, cap is secure, no leaks, radiator support or stabilizer bars in place, all my hoses and clamps here coming off my rad are all in place, electrical, I don't see any exposed wiring, engine itself, no noticeable leaks, Air filter is secure in place, not obstructed. Electrical and relays and fuses all securely mounted. We'll come back over to the left. I'm gonna check my frame rails, no cracks or damage. Oil fill cap, secure in place. Air compressor, securely mounted. All braided lines are secure, inlet and outlets. No noticeable leaks. Power steering, making sure we have a good level. Cap is secure. 
and in place with no leaks. Checking our engine oil, we want to verify, of course, we have oil present in the vehicle, and we do. We'll securely put the dipstick back and back in place. We'll check the fuel filter, securely mounted, no leaks, no damage. I'm going to check my steering. There's no free play side to side, up and down. It does rotate, and I'm going to follow the steering now into my steering box. No noticeable leaks or damage into all my linkage. It's all secure in place. I've got all my castle nuts and cotter pins in place throughout all the linkage. All the linkage, all secured. I'm going to check my shock absorber is secure with no leaks. Airbags securely mounted, no damage, fully inflated. Leaf springs securely mounted, no cracks, no damage. Tying into our axle and our U-bolts are securely mounted and in place. We want to verify our brake chamber is good condition. Our air lines to it and ABS lines are all in place. Slack adjuster securely mounted, pinned, clevis pin and cotter pin in place. So we also want to check our fuel processor, making sure it's secure, our water separator, all in place, all lines, fittings, no leaks, cracks or damage, no signs of visual uh, obvious damage. Inside of the tire now for any bulges, cracks or deficiencies. Good condition. At this point, I'm going to go to the other side. So again, left to right, top down. So any electrical up on the firewall, securely mounted in place. I want to check my air filter restrictor gauge in behind here. It is clear, not compressed, so it's in good standing. Air filter is good condition. All boots and hoses and clamps are in place. Into my intercooler and hoses and clamps, air to air, all securely mounted. Coolant, good level, no leaks, cap secure. Hood supports, safety straps are all in place here. Radiator, shroud, and fan blades on this side. No missing or broken blades. Radiator support is secure. Back to the left. Turbo exhaust is clamped with no leaks. No leaks on the engine block. Turbo itself. All lines are in place. No uh, visual damage or leaks. All in good condition. Our air conditioning compressor and alternator securely mounted. All belts, good condition. No frays, tears, and good tension. Rad support secure. Oil filter on this particular truck is securely mounted with no visual damage or leaks. Frame member or frame rail, no uh, cracks or damage. Back down here, we're going to check brake chamber securely mounted with the airlines and ABS lines. Slack adjuster, clevis pin, cotter pin, all in place. Inside my tire, no bulges or cracks. Axle, good condition, U bolts, all in place. Leaf springs securely mounted with no cracks or visual damage. Shock absorber secure with no leaks and airbag securely mounted, no damage. I also want to check my steering control arm. And right from the top here, we're going to look down and see we have the castle nut and cotter pin right down at the bottom there. Okay, at this point, we're done our underhood inspection. I'm now going to safely close and secure my hood. Now, this uh, particular truck, it has a safety hood latch so nobody can close it on you or the wind. So we want to verify. No tools, nobody underneath. We're going to undo the safety latch now and safely close our hood. And I'm going to latch it up properly on both sides. And this completes our underhood inspection. At this point, I'm going to start the uh, vehicle, the truck. So proper startup procedure is as follows. So I'm going to enter the truck. I'm going to turn the key to the on or run position. Allow everything to cycle through all of our uh, diagnostic checks and ABS sensors. Once everything is cycled through, we're going to verify we are in the neutral position, depress our clutch, and fire the engine. The first gauge we want to watch is our oil pressure. If that doesn't come up within 10 seconds, we will be shutting the vehicle off. All right, uncoupling tractor from trailer. So we're going to verify first and foremost, we are on level ground, solid ground, 
and we always start from the back to the front. So making sure the wheels are chalked or blocked. We have blocks in place, nice and snug. I like them to stay out a little bit like this for two reasons. One, we see them in the mirror, you won't forget them. Number two, if they do get stuck, you have a place at least to tap them out and get them out of place. Okay, so secure in place, we're gonna work forward now. After the chocks are in place, I'm gonna lower my landing gear. So with the landing gear, you have your landing gear handle here. Every trailer is a little different. You'll have two speeds. Some are to the left, some are to the right. Depends on the make and model in the trailer. In this case, I'm going to lower the landing gear. I want to verify both sides are lowering evenly. So on the other side is coming down as well. Now we have a suspension drop feature on this tractor. So I'm just going to lower it till it's just above the ground or slightly touching. Right about there. We're going to safely now stow the handle back in its secure position. At this point, I'm going to work forward. I am now going to release the fifth wheel. I'm going to grab my pin puller out of my tractor and pull the fifth wheel release handle. So this particular fifth wheel is a Holland fifth wheel. So it has a lock bolt up here on the front which is in the fully engaged lock position and the release handle. So now I'm going to safely pull it out. Notice that the handle is out and the locking bolt is now out. So it is in the open position. We're going to safely duck underneath now and do a visual on the uh, jaws to make sure they're in the disengaged open position. So watch your head and back. Into the slot there, jaws, they do look closed because of the Holland style, but they're disengaged. You're gonna notice the difference when we recouple. So everything's good here now, I'm ready to exit. I'm gonna disconnect blue service, my red supply, and my electrical. Very important not to grab the cord. Don't wiggle. Lift the little flap on the locking plate on the trailer and just slide out straight. I'm now gonna safely hang them into my holder. Get into the truck now, and I'm going to pull forward slowly in first gear, just so the fifth wheel disengages and gets off of the kingpin, but I'm leaving the fifth wheel still under the trailer. Then I'm gonna drop my air suspension, secure the truck, pull my park brake, and come outside. And now dropping my air suspension. I'm gonna safely exit. And we wanna have a look here. Suspension is dropping now. So what we're doing is just lowering the trailer safety, safely to the ground. And we're waiting for some daylight to appear between the fifth wheel and the coupler plate of the trailer. And there we have it. So this is our first indication the trailer is secure on its own. It's holding, it's not relying on the tractor. I am now going to get in, pull ahead, so the fifth wheel just clears the front of the trailer, but the trailer is still over the rear axle of the tractor, and I will raise my suspension. Suspension is now raising, and we're verified for the second time now 
trailer is secure on its own, landing gear is holding, and we're free of the trailer. This completes the uncoupling process. I'm now just gonna move my tractor over to an offset position and then inspect the rear of the tractor here thoroughly. Right. At this point, I'm going to grab my hammer and I'm now going to take advantage, since the trailer is not on my tractor, this is a great time now to inspect the back end of this tractor thoroughly. So I'm going to start at the back here, just verifying all my frame and cross members are not cracked or damaged, no visual damage. My walking deck, catwalk, platform, whatever term you want to use is secure and in place. Down and below here now, we want to check our brake chamber is securely mounted. Okay, so brake chamber, our slack adjusters appear to be in good condition, our axle and U-bolts securely mounted, all our torsion bars and suspension and springs are all in place, inside of the tire, no bulges or cracks, airbag securely mounted and inflated, not damaged, we're going to check our tread, good even tread wear, no obstructions in between, all the sidewalls are in good condition, we're going to check tire pressure, And every tire and wheel the same. So I want to check the sidewall of the tire for any bulges or cracks. Make sure I have a good seat on the rim. Rim itself free of cracks or damages. We're going to make sure all the lug nuts are in place. There are covers here, but we're just verifying that nothing's loose. No shiny spots, rust streaks indicating they're backing off. Axle seal and hub with no leaks. And I want to check both valve stems are centered and capped. We'll work our way down. Shock absorber is secure with no leaks. Fifth wheel, securely mounted. It's greased in the open position, securely locked on the adjuster. All mounting bolts and everything are in place. And we'll check the rear axle assemblies here now. Axle, U-bolts are all in place. Brake chamber, slack adjuster, all secure uh, in place. All our springs, torsion bar, and everything else is securely mounted. No bulges or cracks on the inside of the tire. Okay, so tread on these tires is getting there. We're definitely gonna be replacing them here shortly for the winter season. No obstructions in between. Sidewalls, no bulges or cracks. And again, we verified air pressure on all four. Outside, sidewall free of bulges and cracks. Rim for damages. Lug nuts all secure and in place. No shiny spots or rust streaks. Valve stems we wanna make sure are centered and capped. This one's missing a cap. Hub, no leaks. Shock absorber and airbag back here, secure, no leaks. Frame and cross members, no cracks or damage. Mud flaps secure. Mud flaps secure. Back here, my four ways are working. I'd like to check again here, the fifth wheel, no visual damage, jaws are open, and again, we do have grease in place. My U-joints, my drive line and drive shafts, nice and straight. Torsion bars secure. Rear end, no leaks, all electrical, no exposed wiring. We'll do the same down this side. Shock absorber, make sure it's securely mounted, no leaks. Airbag, fully inflated, no visual damage. Inside the tires here for any bulges or cracks. Axle and U-bolts on this side, securely mounted. Torsion bar all secure in place with all suspension. Tread, again, gonna be replaced shortly, but even wear. No obstructions in between. Good air pressure on all four. Same tire inspection. Sidewall, free of bulges, cracks, good seat on the rim. Rim for cracks, damages. Checking all the lugs, secure in place. Hub without leaks and valve stem centered and capped. Shock absorber here, securely mounted. Airbag and fully inflated with no damage. Fifth wheel all locked on this side. All swivel bolts in place and mounting bolts. Good condition. Catwalk, walk deck, securely mounted over here. Inside sidewall, no bulges or cracks. U-bolts, axle assembly, all torsion bar, springs and suspension. Even wear with no obstructions in between. No damage on the sidewalls. Free of bulges, cracks, good seat. Rim free of cracks, damage. Again, all lug nuts secure in place. All hub nuts, if exposed, secure. 
no leaks, and valve stems centered and capped. Electrical, securely mounted, frame, no cracks or damage. At this point, I'm gonna get back in the tractor, put my hammer away, I'm now gonna back up to the trailer, four-way flasher's horn, and line up for the coupling process. Again, three points contact, reverse, nice and slow, four ways, horn, and line up to the unit. All right, coupling process. So we're all lined up back to front again. So verifying again, my wheels are chalked or blocked. Securely blocked. Landing gear is secure, so trailer's secure. At this point, we're gonna go back underneath now and we're gonna inspect a few things. So we're going to make sure kingpin, no cracks or damage, coupler plate, free of any cracks, fractures or damage. Jaws are open and nice and straight, pinned to the slot. So a little riddle I use is pin, plate, open, straight. We're going to verify here the fifth wheel to the front apron of the trailer is perfect height. If this trailer was up too high at this point, I would adjust the trailer height with my landing gear. So I'm now ready to get in the truck. I'm going to drop my air suspension, back up slowly just to cover the fifth wheel, but not engaging on the kingpin. So just the fifth wheel and the trailer will be flush at the front. So I'm going to drop my air, just get under, raise the air, secure the truck and come outside and make sure we have no daylight. I now raise the air. We're looking for nice tight fit here. No daylight between the fifth wheel and coupler plate. I am now gonna back up. It's gonna latch. You're gonna watch from here. When I back under and engage the pin, you're gonna see the lock bolt go in and the handle go in. Then I'm gonna go to first gear and do two tug tests. Tug number one, tug number two. Secure truck. Most important of all now, before anything else, is verify your locks. Number one, bolt all the way in. If you see any daylight at all, you run the risk of losing your trailer. So it's fully locked, there's no space. Handle now fully locked and pushed all the way flush. I like to just push it once to verify, just to make sure everything's fully engaged. And now you're gonna go underneath and check the jaws are locked. You'll see them fully locked, wrapped around that kingpin. Next, I'm gonna inspect and connect my airlines and electrical. So we want to verify electrical, our seven-way connector, free of any uh, obstructions, and verifying in the trailer now that there are seven pins here in the trailer. None are broken off or compromised. So we're going to line it up nice and straight, no wiggling, and fully engaged. 
like so. Now I'll hook my airlines up and inspect my glad hands, make sure the seals are in good condition. No damage to the lines themselves. Seal to seal, twist down tight. Verify with my supply emergency line, seal to seal, and twist down tight. Lastly, I'm gonna raise my landing gear. It's fully up now, I come back half a turn and stow the handle away, secure. This completes coupling procedure. Now that we're coupled back up, we're ready for our full exterior pre-trip inspection. So I'm just gonna get in and I'm gonna set my truck up for my uh, circle trek or walk around. So I'm gonna enter the cab safely as we discussed. So just one click forward onto the run position. Let everything cycle through. Now we gotta turn on all our necessary lights. So I'm gonna turn on my headlights, my high beam, my left signal, and when I exit on this truck, we have our trailer hand valve here. I'm gonna use my seat belt to keep this in the applied position so we can check our own brake lights. So I'm gonna safely exit and I'm gonna take the seat belt in order to do that. Okay, so I'm just gonna take the seat belt and wrap it around my hand valve, just like so. And sometimes it'll stay like that. If not, you can clip it into the holder but I think we're pretty good here. Okay, now I'm gonna exit safely and we'll begin the exterior. So I'm gonna take my gloves, get my hammer, and we're gonna start at the front of the truck. So I like to stand back about 10 feet and let your eyes be your guide. So top down all around, top down. So I can see right up top, Clearance lights are all working, not damaged. Visor is securely mounted in place. Windshield, no cracks or visual damage. Windshield wipers appear to be secure, but we're gonna check their operation inside. I'm gonna check my hood, my fenders, no new damage. My grill, not obstructed or damaged. And my lights, right now I have my left signal lights on, my high beams are on and not damaged, and my right marker light is on. So left signal, high beams, right marker light, bumper secure and in place, plate securely mounted, and we verified earlier hood is secure. I'm gonna work my way around counterclockwise, top, down, all around. Fender, side of the hood, no bulges or uh, damage, sorry. Air intake, no obstruction or damage, hood is secure. Tire, even tread, good tread depth. Check sidewall for bulges, cracks or damage. Rim for cracks or damages. Again, all lug nuts. I know there's covers here, but we want to verify that there's no shiny spots, rust streaks, or spidering. Indicates moisture getting in behind the lug nut and the actual stud, backing off the uh, tightness and the effectiveness of your lug nuts. No leaks from our hub. Valve stem centered and capped. Tire pressure, we never hit sidewall, always tread. Good inflation. Top of the cab, no visual damage. Mirror securely mounted. No cracks, no damage. Door functions, opens, closes. All my grab handles are secure in place. I'm gonna check my fuel tank, securely mounted. Cap secure. All my air vent and breather valve secure. All lines are secure and no leaks. Step secure and in place. DEF tank, securely mounted, no leaks. Cap secure, step secure. All toolboxes and jockey boxes are secure in place. My batteries are in here. I would check them for my three C's, condition, connection, corrosion, and security. Airlines, electrical, not caught on anything. Everything's securely mounted in place. We have already checked the rear of our tractor. So I'm gonna check now, starting at the top, my trailer. Make sure clearance lights at the top are working. No visual damage on the body of the trailer on the front making sure all trailer documents are in here. So we would have our insurance registration and our CVIP or inspection, uh, commercial vehicle inspection certificate to match our decal, which is valid up to date, April of next year, 2024. I like to look down now the side of the trailer here to look for any bulges or cracks and waving along the trailer. 
We also want to make sure we have minimum 50% reflective tape down the side. This particular trailer is 100%. Side of the trailer, there's no new body damage. Landing gear is secure in the upright position. Left signal's working, right brake light working, not damaged. Again, no new damage. Left signal is working and not damaged. At this point, I like to look under and verify all my cross members are straight, not bent, compromised or broken, and all my floorboards are solid and in place. Under here, we're gonna check and verify our airlines are securely mounted and they're up at least 18 inch clearance from the ground, so we have enough clearance. Also verifying while we're here, our tandem sliders are in place for the adjustment of our trailer axles. So the handle's locked and the pin is locked in the adjustment settings. So it's locked here, and we're gonna verify at the back it's locked there. At this point, we're gonna go under and check the brake chambers, so the pots, axle and U-bolts, and suspension, springs, torsion bars, inside of the tires for bulges or cracks, drums, if, if you have visible, the dust covers are off on this one so we can see all the drums and the brake components, and on both sides. Then we're gonna work on our tires now. So same thing, we make sure we have good tread, even wear. We wanna look in between for any obstructions in between the tires. So rocks, debris, any pieces of wood or anything in between our dualies here. I'm gonna hammer all four for inflation. Good tire pressure and the same. Sidewall bulges and cracks. Let's come to this one here, Cassian. Sidewall bulges and cracks. Three of them, rim, no cracks, damage, all lug nuts. Definitely secure in place. Check the hub, it has oil, no leaks, and valve stems are centered and capped. So you'll see the inside one and the exterior one for both tires. We'll check here now, mud flap secure, and our rear pin for our slider is in the locked position. Marker light working, not damaged. At the back of the trailer, top down. So at the top, we're gonna make sure the doors are securely latched, top, hinges in good condition, and the bottom secure. If I had any cargo or, secure, or uh, load, I would verify my securement at this point. Check we have a reflective tape all up the back. Now we have our specific lights. We have left signal, brake light, marker lights, brake light, tail light, and license plate light. This will be hard to verify in the sun, but license plate light's working, plate's valid, secure. We'll check the rear bumper of the trailer is solid and secure. And we'll repeat down the passenger side here. Marker light is working, not damaged. We'll have a look down the side of this trailer. No waving or bowing. And we have at least minimum 50% reflective tape. No new body damage, good condition. Mud flap is secure and in place. Slider pins locked on this side. Tires and wheels, even tread, tread depth, no obstructions in between. Tire pressure, and every tire and wheel the same as we've discussed. Sidewall for bulges and cracks, rim for cracks or damages. Verify all your lug nuts are tight, secure and in place. Hub has proper oil, no leaks, and our valve stems are centered and capped. Same on this assembly. Working along, front slider pin is locked on this side. And the side of the trailer here. No new body damage, good shape. I'm gonna check the marker light on the right side's working. Landing gear is fully raised on this side. Secure, we've already checked the rear here. Just gonna finish the front corner of the trailer. No body damage and clearance lights on this side are working. With the uh, rest of the tractor now, we wanna check our exhaust. So our grab handle secure, our heat guard secure in place. The exhaust itself, securely mounted. No corrosion, rust or breaks there in the elbow. All in good place, no exhaust leaks. 
Door securely mounted, good condition. Door opens, closes, mirror secure, no cracks or damages. Steps are secure in place. Marker light is working. Hood's latched here. Side of this hood, intake's not obstructed, damaged. Fender and hood in good shape. Even tread, good depth. Check our sidewall, bulges and cracks. Good seat on this rim. Rim, no cracks, damage. Again, all my lug nuts tighten in place. No indication of them loosening or backing off. Valve stem centered and capped. Hub nuts in place with no leaks. Tire pressure, very good. I'm gonna put my hammer back now and I'm gonna switch my lights to low beam right signal. And we're gonna go around again, just checking the light change. So I'm just gonna reach in here, go to the low beam headlights and right signal. And we'll continue around. So we've already checked everything, we're just checking the light change now. So now at this point, we have our right signal and left brake light on. Marker light on. Back here now, tail light, brake light, brake light, right signal working. And we'll finish on the right side with our signal. It's working. Again, if we missed it, verifying right signal, left brake light working. Right signal working. And we'll finish at the front now. Now we have our right signal, low beam, low beam, and left marker light. This completes the exterior inspection. Okay, so now that we're inside, I like to do my interior inspection. Um, I like to do what I call sweep the cab. So I start at the seatbelt here and just work my way around once. So I'm gonna verify my seatbelt is in good condition. It functions safely and releases. And I'll work my way around. I'm gonna check my window operation on the driver's side. Functions up and down. I'll check it on the passenger side from here. I have the power window. Goes down and goes up. Good. We're gonna check the left signal works on the dash. Right signal works on the dash. Okay, so left, right. High beam indicator works on the dash. Wiper and washer functioning. Good. We're gonna check our horns are working. So electric, air, functioning. Gauges, verifying in good condition, not damaged. When we start up, we're gonna check operation of our gauges. Steering, it's good condition. Again, when we start the unit, we can check for any free play. We wanna make sure our defroster and our fan is functioning, especially coming to winter time or any time you need defrost on it. So all functioning, again, all gauges in good condition. There's nothing loose top. Nothing loose bottom, so nothing's gonna roll into our pedals or anything while operating. And we wanna verify our safety equipment. That we have a fire extinguisher, secure, charged, and pinned. We have emergency triangles in the red box and a full stocked first aid kit. So that completes my in-vehicle inspection. At this point, we're going to proceed to the air brake inspection. So number one, we make sure the wheels are chalked. Next, we have to verify on our primary and secondary gauges that we have at least 100 PSI on both circuits, and we do. So we're ready to begin our process. So the key is in the run or power position. At this point, I'm going to push in my red trailer supply valve. Yellow park stays applied or pulled. So red in. I'm now going to exit safely and disconnect my airlines. Blue first, service, then the red line. The red one's live right now. So I'm going to go blue, psh, snap the red and come back in the cab. The pressure will drop. I wanna confirm two things. Low air warning should come on by 60 PSI and my red trailer button should pop 40 PSI or greater. So 40 to 60 is an average range, but it can also be higher. So we'll say 40 to 60 or greater. So I'm gonna safely exit and disconnect my airlines. 
Okay, so I'm gonna disconnect my blue nicely and I'm just gonna lay it safely here on the decking and I'm gonna carefully take the red off. I'm now going to enter the cab and watch my air gauges. They are dropping and we're confirming what we said. Red should pop 40 to 60 or greater. And on this truck, it's right around the 70 range. So definitely in spec. Next, I'm gonna check my trailer hand valve. So this I'm gonna apply. I'm gonna visually, and in some cases, if it's quiet enough, audibly out the window. So both visual and audible, checking for leaks from our blue service line. So this che checks our tractor protection system. No leaks, good condition. This point, I'm gonna push my yellow park control valve in. And again, to reiterate, the low air warning should come on by 60 PSI. So you're gonna see the lights come on at 60 or greater. And I'm verifying the yellow park brake should pop out between 20 and 45. So to do that, I'm gonna pump my brakes or fan the system down. Low air warning comes on on both. Yes, above 60. Now we're gonna verify the park brake should pop between 20 and 45. And we're right at 21, 22 here and about 25 there. So we're good. I'm gonna safely exit now and reconnect my airlines. Blue to blue, red to red. Nice and easy, twist down tight. Seal to seal, nice and square and twist down tight. So at this point now, I'm going to get my stopwatch timer ready. We don't start it yet, we just have it ready. We are now going to do our supply circuit. So we're going to do our compressor build-up test. So I'm going to start the engine, I'm going to depress the clutch. Always good habit, use your clutch when starting trucks. Start the engine, again verifying commercial or uh, oil pressure, yes. So now I'm going to put my RPM to 1200 RPM. And now we're gonna be timing the buildup from 50 to 90 PSI within three minutes. So this truck, it's an ADIS system, air dryer integrated system. So it's gonna go one circuit at a time. As Soon as this hits 50, I'm gonna start my clock. 50 right now. When that gets to 90, I'm going to stop the clock. Also, we're gonna verify that the low air warning goes out anywhere after 60 PSI. And there it goes on the primary, so that's above 60. We're still timing. Again, when I get to 90, I'll stop the clock on the primary time. We're at 90, so now we're gonna wait. This is gonna go to about 100 and then stop and this will come up. When this gets to 50, I'm gonna resume. So combined 50 to 90 within three minutes. So that's this particular truck is the ADIS setup. A lot of other trucks, they'll go at the same time. So you just time them together. And 50 now. Low air out after 60, yes. When I get to 90, stop the clock. Has to be under three minutes and we're well within that spec. So now we're going to continue to build to verify the governor cutout pressure and that should be between 120 to 135 PSI. So we're at 120. And there it is, cut out. So at this point we're going to check the governor cut in. So I need to minus or drop 20 to 25 PSI from where it is now. So to do this, we want to release our park control valves. So yellow tractor and then red trailer. And this is going to drop some air for you. If you need, you can help it with the brake a little extra. So you get down 20 to 25. End up, depending on the truck, about 105 or so. Then I'm going to resume RPM at 1200. And now we're verifying if they are rebuilding. 
And yes, they're slowly replenishing, rebuilding. This confirms Governor Cutin is functioning. We're now going to go to the cutout range again of 120, 135. There we are. At this point, we want to check now the entire tractor trailer unit for leaks. So I'm going to shut the engine off and I'm going to put the key back to the runner power position and just be patient, let it cycle through again before we do anything. Okay, so now we're going to do a leak test. So you're going to get your timer ready and you have to do a two minute leak test. So what that means is I'm going to do a full service brake application and I'm going to let it stabilize for a few seconds. So we'll watch the gauges, full brake application. The gauges now are going to stabilize. Once they settle, we're going to start a clock for two minutes. The maximum that we can lose is four PSI on the tractor and two PSI on the trailer. So we're going to just fast forward. I'm not going to hold for two minutes, but two minute hold for leak tests. <laughs> Once you release now, this is where we can just trigger the automatic slack adjusters. So we don't need the time anymore. So I can just do, I already did one full brake application with the leak test. I can do one more. So push hard and hold, waiting for lag time, one 1000 release. And now apply your park brakes. Pull the yellow, the red will come with it. I am now safe to exit, remove the wheel chocks, and then I can do my rolling responses, which means I'm gonna actually start the vehicle, seat belt on, move forward about 10 feet, check my foot brake response, move forward about 10 feet, checking my handbrake response. This completes the air brake inspection.